Woodlice, Pillbugs, Roly Polies, Billy Bakers, Monkey Peas, Grandma's Out, Parsons Pig, Chicky Wig, Cheese Lock, Daddy's Gamfer, Granny Grunter. These are all names for isopods. And in England alone, we have 250 different names for them, depending on which area you go to, which is unbelievable. I grew up calling them Woodlouse or Rufflouse. Why don't you tell me in the comments below what you called them when you grew up. This video is about unnatural selection and how you can create your own isopod. And the species I'm going to use today as my subject is going to be Persilio scaba or scaba as some people call them. And the best place to start is from birth. Isopods are a bit like kangaroos as they have a pouch and that's where the babies will live between six and seven weeks as eggs and another six and seven weeks as actual baby isopods. And then when they emerge, they will just scatter and probably never encounter their mother again in the wild, that is. When they're very young like this, baby isopods need a lot of moisture to help them develop and grow. And once they reach an adult stage, they're quite tough and can probably live two to three years sometimes even been recorded as five years in captivity. Sex in isopods can be quite a challenge, especially Postilio scaba. And at the back of the underbelly, you will see they have little plates under there and the males are pointed and the females are flat. And I hope I put it up here or here so you can see because there's no way I could do a macro of it because my eyes aren't good enough to tell. Isopods become sexually mature around 12 weeks, 13 weeks, something like that. And uh, at that point, they will commence rumpy pumpy. And the male will mount the female and stay there for several hours. So it's not something you want to sit around and watch. When he's finished, we go right back to what I've just said about the birth and we continue all the way back to this again. During that short break, the reptile shop caught me and said they got my sphagnum moss in. So I thought, I'll go for a walk before continuing. And this being England, I got soaked, it pissed down. So here I am, I'd like to get changed and everything before continuing this. So let's get back on with creating our own isopod colony. And to do this, we need some cardboard toilet rolls, some double-sided sticky tape, and no, that's, that's a different video. Uh, what we need is an existing isopod colony. And I collected this one from an old tank that I refurbished at weekend. And believe it or not, this little tank, tub, enclosure, goldfish bowl has 569 isopods in it at the last count. Probably more now because a lot of them are gravid. So I should have plenty to choose from in here. And what we're going to do is have a look at these guys and see what we can pick out to create our own Frankenstein monster. So I'm going to include this, but... Here we go, if I can get this, hold this steady. This macro lens, this guy is shedding. When I came to separate them for the video, I found this one. Now, when they shed, they're shedding two halves. And it's usually the posterior, or arse end first. And then the anterior, which is the uh, antenna end, if you like. And he'll shed that skin off. He hasn't shed his. Let me see if I can get around here. One sec. It's quite difficult because I don't really want to disturb him too much. Let's see if I can hold this piece of moss and show you. As you see, yeah, if you can see the, the difference there, you can see the line where. Focus, come on. Where his top half is gonna is gonna lighter. So he's going to shed that, or she's going to shed that. Once he's got that bottom half off, which I think they just just managed to do. There you see her, shedding. Yeah, it's nearly off. And then the top half will start to come off so she can grow. Okay. Okay, I've already isolated and saved you the trouble of watching me fight with hundreds of isopods trying to get them out of the, the bowl and separate the, the patterns that I like. So this is your average uh, Pacilio scaba, scaba. 
uh, which are pretty much the usual dull grey that you normally get. And within there I found a lot of lighter coloured ones with a genetic mutation. So what I'm going to do is completely isolate all the lighter ones, put them in their own enclosure, and when they breed, the genetic mutation should carry on and we end up with um, a morph that may or may not turn into a nice little creation at the end of the day. We'll have to see. Yes, it's as simple as that. Just removing the genetic mutations and isolating them together, you end up creating a new morph of isopod. Now you can take your little orange ones, your little chocolate coloured ones, you might have one with a stripe on it. If you've got a couple with a stripe on it, put them together and so on and so forth until you get what you want. It's a lot easier than it was creating dogs from wolves because these guys will breed a lot faster and you'll be able to see your own creation come to life in a short amount of time. If this short video was useful to you, give us a subscribe, maybe a like and uh, consider sharing. Don't forget to tickle my bell so you get everything that I do as I do release quite frequently. See ya. And yes, it is as simple as that, just by removing the jetting the